if that you can trust, try Panado Advance. All right, thank you for staying with your world this morning on NTV Kenya. We want to switch gears a bit and talk about something that is very important to you, that is self-help groups, uh, popularly known as Chamas and what it means. But just before we do that, let me give you an update of what else is happening across the world. And nearly one third of Nigerian children lack access to enough water, the UN Children Agency, UNICEF, says calling for urgent measures to address the problem. In a statement marking the World Water Day on Monday, UNICEF said more than 1.42 billion people in the world, which includes 450 million children, are living in areas of high or extremely high water vulnerability. We talk about portable drinking water is good. The government should provide at least portable drinking water, most especially for the children, the kids. They need portable drinking water before going to school. They need to drink water before doing their day-to-day -day activities. From West Africa to North Africa, an Egyptian couple took it upon them themselves to move pets across town with a new taxi which only serves animals. The couple launched the service four months ago and by offering pet rides to homes, training centers and clinics, as well as offering journeys between different governorates for pets owners who cannot run the errands as on their own. As a couple, the husband Baha Eldin Saleh drives the car, while his wife, Habitala Soleiman, sits at the back to keep the animals company. In long rides, Soleiman feeds the pets and answers to their bathroom needs. Very interesting innovation in the world of limitless opportunities. And we will be talking about just that, that just now. As I promised you, we are talking about something that is of interest to most of us and was and is very plays a very significant role in the economy. That is self-help groups. What they, uh, the role they play in the economy in plugging, of course, the gap in access to finance and ensuring um, inclusion, uh, fi financial inclusion. And, of course, the challenges that lie in therein, the innovations that come in to answer some of these challenges. And we want you to be part of that conversation, by the way. We have our question of the day this morning. Again, we ask you, are you a member of a Chama? Are you a member of a Chama? What challenges have you faced in administering the group? Once again, are you a member of a Chama? And what challenges have you faced in administering the group? Make sure you are part of this discussion. Use the hashtag new normal on Twitter. You can tweet us at NTV Kenya. Uh, my personal handle is at Victor Kiprop underscore. This conversation also is um, um, text flight on Instagram and Facebook where you could be part of it. will be sampling part of your feedback as we continue this discussion. We'll also be opening up our lines, by the way, so that you could talk to part of the people that we have uh, so far and answer some of the questions that you might have. But for now, let's get you started on that conversation about Chama. And I have a very interesting panel to help us break down this discussion this morning. Eric Otieno Yugi is the founder of CEO and CEO, of course, of Malipol Circles. Welcome to the show, Eric. Thank you. All right. Um, on the other part of the studio, we have Hannah Maria Mabruki. She's a financial advisor with ICO Lion um, Insurance. Welcome to the show, Hannah. Thank you so much. All right. Joining us virtually this morning is Patrick Wameo. He's the director of, of Kenya Association of Investment Groups. Welcome to the show, Patrick. Morning. Um, all right. And of course, finally joining us is Virginia Mbiriri. She is a Chama member this morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that are, that are the people who are going to help us break down this discussion about Chama. And Eric, I want to uh, start with you this discussion about Chama. Because when we talk about Chama, sometimes all we, we all remember is what our mothers used to, the merry-go-rounds that we used to see our mothers do. They come together, they changa some 50, 50, 100. And at the end of the day, you see how she's come home with a new set of utensils. But sometimes we don't realize that most of the things that we do actually are actually part of what we call chamas. But by, by basic definition, just talk to us 
uh, what is this Chama thing and why is it such a big deal? It's, it's interesting that you've started from the point of our mothers and the concept of Chama because growing up I think I was brought up by a lot of that. Uh, where every Friday I'd see my mom have to go to something she called Chama. I didn't realize it by then because mm -hmm. I had to go home where she had to go for it. Yeah. And our life just seemed to be, she really never seemed to lack. And most of it, she claimed it to be around the, the concept of Chama. And it dawned on me very early that the best way to progress as a person is actually to come together as a group. Mm. Uh, and the older you grow, the more you learn, then you realize that the same concept just grows in what a company is, what an investment group is. It's the same, the granular level is the Chama. And that's why I find it to be a very important part of our society, the financial system, and why it's important that we try to, to have that discussion going forward about it. Okay, all right. And just, just before we move from that point of coming together, let me bring in Patrick here. Patrick, you, you also um, sit in a situation of, of similar, uh, of course, of what uh, Eric has talked about. I mean, these mamas, when they contribute, sometimes it's just 20, 30 shillings, 50 shillings. But at the end of the day, what you see um, as the product of this is a huge, something huge. It's, it's a house that has been built. It's a car. It's a matata that has been built. Talk to us about um, the importance, of course, harnessing these synergies and the importance of social capital. I don't know if Patrick is still with us. There are, there are quite a wide variety of benefits that uh, people draw from investment groups or chamas as uh, they are known in Swahili. But there's six key ones. Number one is uh, the fact that uh, this group effect lowers the risk to a member. I remember this, this kind of uh, instrument targets people of largely low income initially of course, it's now adopted by the higher income. And for the low income, a loss is a loss. Uh, so it does play a very key role in lowering the risk to me as a member. Okay. So that if we participate, 20 of us, and I and I and we made some loss, we share the loss among us. Okay. I don't lose my entire money. Maybe as Patrick, as, key... as you continue to respond, we want to see you uh, in full picture. Maybe you can adjust uh, your camera a bit. All right, as he does that, I can bring in um, Hannah into the discussion. Hannah, good morning and welcome to the show. W when we talk about financial inclusion in Kenya, women are, the mo are, are some of those who are actually locked out of the conversation. When you talk about you know, having collateral as land and all those issues, women are those who are discriminated when it comes to access to credit. But we have this Chamat thing. Just talk to us about um, the solution that this has meant uh, for people who have been locked out of uh, the mainstream banking system. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, okay, for me, Chamas give an opportunity for all women to be included. It is true women have been excluded in, when it came to opening banks, opening circles, and for a very long time, until uh, when people sat down and decided, okay, we are all women in a certain uh, setup, be it in a church, be it in a family setup. What else can we do by ourselves? So they decided, why can't we all come up and start saving whatever amount we have, be it 100 bob, 200 bob, and that is how chamas have formed. Okay. And uh, that has made them have the unity of purpose and the strength to come forth and say, okay, now we are going to equity bank. Uh, there's no way you're going to refuse me and give me the opportunity to open an account. And that has now mushroomed to many now what we know, the MFIs, the microfinance institutions, and even banks, which have just mushroomed from simple chamas to circles to now banks. Okay. And, and of course, when you talk about the banking system, Eric would tell you that we, when, when we talk about lending in this country, most people would think, ah, the banks or the MFIs or... Um, the now very new digital platforms are lending. But, but if you look at statistics, that caters for only a small, uh, may not even be more than 50% of Kenyans, and you realize that most of us actually, uh, we get our loans uh, through very informal channels. Uh, that's largely true. 
In fact, it's interesting that despite the mushrooming of all the digital loan channels we see and the banking sector, 70% and the data proves that 70% of loans are still informal. Informal in the nature is that it's still between friends, and this includes then the Chama uh, groups that we talk about. So these Chamas ideally help each other to, uh, I think there's a time, a scenario where you have, like somebody's, all, when you wake up and you have access to more than 500,000 mm. because of the Chama, the way that you guys are able to contribute. And being a lot of people, mm. pulling funds become extremely easy. And the motivation that comes with a society and a community around the concept and, and I find that to be quite a powerful concept around Chamas. Okay. Yes. Uh, but when we have a formal banking system that should be lending to people and we find a, a huge uh, segment of the population de deciding to go informal, what does that say about us? First, access to finance, especially the third world, and Kenya to be particular, is lagged behind by the idea that there are no formal records that exist for most of these people who are locked out of the financial system. So how do you then keep those records of the collections that you do as a chairman? Mm. When you walk to a bank, a bank needs 12-month or 24-month statements. It needs you to be employed. Mm. You have a, a market where most people are still unemployed uh, necessarily and don't have, are not very good at record keeping in terms of their financial progress. That therefore leaves a lot of them outside of the formal banking system. And that's where then the kind of lending systems that have come mm -hmm. then looked to plug in onto those spaces. Okay. But ideally, the majority of that is still in the informal sector. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But for anyone who is watching us right now and wondering, I have never tried this Chama thing, by the way. Maybe I'm considering. From where you sit, do they work? To answer that question, the I'll give an example of trans century, mm. okay? Mm. Because most people can then relate to that. It's grown into a very big company and ideally started out as a chama. Uh, I'll give, and it's a bunch of people who came together and said, we need to do something. We start with collections. The idea starts simple. And then as you then solve the very basics of treasury, record keeping, trust, transparency, that comes to this small group of people, it then opens and gives an efficacy to grow even bigger into big ideas. So yes, Chamas work. Um, I think even some of our panelists sitting here have been part of Chamas, yeah. which have done actually very successfully. Mm -hmm. So the idea of Chamas work, uh, our parents brought us up, some of us, through the, the core idea of Chamas. Mm -hmm. We needed school fees. They didn't need to run to a bank. Mm -hmm. so they could access their money in less than an hour okay. to be able to take you to school. And speaking about Chamas working, by the way, we have Virginia with us. Virginia, good morning. Um, if you can join us at this point of the discussion, then Eric has mentioned, um, has talked about how these things work. And you're a member of a Chama. Has it worked for you? Um, I think it's been uh, very beneficial for me um, as an individual and for the group of members that we are with in the same Chama. When we started, we started without a goal, without a plan. And eventually, after a year of being in the same chama, we came up with an investment strategy, which has seen us grow our investment portfolio, both individually and as a group. So, yeah, it's been amazing. <laughs> okay. All right. Let, let, let me come back to you, Eric, at this point then, because... Uh, she has mentioned, both of you have mentioned how successful, uh, of course, these things have been. And, and uh, I want to cite an issue that I saw about something called Kamweredo, I think, in central Kenya, where you, you used it to fundraise. And uh, I think women used to pay their own dowry, sort of marry themselves, so that they can um, be able to receive dowry when their children get married. Talk to us about how entrenched is part of our culture this, this Chama thing is. You, you brought it back home. I just want to take you a bit further mm -hmm. to see how big the concept of Chamas is. Yeah. If you go down to South Africa, you find they have a big following of what they call Stockwells. Yeah. They literally every year have like a fellowship where they all travel to one place just to go and meet. And all this started because a lot of people used to go to the mines, and now all the husbands were down in the mines, and the wives were left in the cities. So how then would they still support them? So the wives had to come together and be able to put the money, and then the husbands would be able to send them. And since there was no formal way of sending money, mm -hmm. you'd actually want to give the next person who is traveling home. And since all of you cannot travel together, 
so that they go and keep it together. And if anything was to happen, you'll then support each other as a group. So the concept is so widespread across Africa, just not only in Kenya, where you've talked about the Kikuyu had lit, uh, you go to Western Kenya, it's the same concept all the way down to the coast. So chamas are as ingrained and as old in our societies as, as, as far as we can think back. Okay. In fact, it's interesting, they, they even have cards, they even have their own formal ways of trying to keep it, where they have records on small cards mm -hmm. that they write every time somebody comes and they have one person who they trust with the money, mm -hmm. whether he has a big box where he decides to slash it in and keep the cash. Yeah. So it's as old as, as we can all think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mentioned something about record keeping just now. Let me bring in Hannah at this point because, uh, yes, these things are successful and there are those which have graduated to become, you know, bigger MFIs, bigger uh, banks and big, really big organizations from just a small group of women in the village who are trying to build a small chama. But there are also thousands of them that die every day and, and that is because of the tens of challenges um, that they face. Talk to us, starting with the point that uh, Eric has mentioned about issues about record keeping. Okay. Um, I will mention that most people, most chamas have challenges. It's okay. true. At the beginning when you record keeping, if you don't have a trustworthy treasurer, mm. it becomes a problem because this is the person who you're giving your money to, be it uh, face to face or via mobile phones. And uh, as a chama, you need to have a common purpose. By the time we need to actually, by the time we come back together, we need to have a common goal, a common vision. Why are we forming this chama? Then do we know each other? Are we family? Are we from the same village? Are we f using, are we from the same circle of life? That is one. Then how much do you trust this person? Mm. Are they going to run away with your cash once you give it? So those are the challenges you come up with mm -hmm. when you're, wanting to join a chama and actually those are some of the challenges i was having when i was trying to choose which chama to join okay and uh, lucky for me we had one forum we had we were all in a forum called business women in business mm. and we were asking each other who is in a chama who is in a chama and most of the times you'll find the women in the cities are having a hard time having this same concept that our mothers had in the village okay so we all started one WhatsApp group and we decided, okay, we are going to form our own chama. Mm -hmm. Though we don't know each other, but it has to have some really high trust levels. Okay. So those are the things, transparency, trust, and honesty is, is very hard to get. Okay. I don't know if Patrick is back with us, um, this discussion. All right, Patrick, if you're back with us, do the ch challenges that uh, Hannah is talking about uh, make sense to you? Actually, those are the things that make a chama. The, the reason uh, people end up in a chama usually they would have initially some social uh, relationship. Could be people like, uh, in her case, uh, in a women in business, could be classmates, family, people who go to church together. This a, a social background to chama. And eventually, the, the people have met long enough to build trust between themselves. As that goes on, the objective moves from the social reason why they were meeting to financial or investing reasons as, as, as another objective. So the, 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 the challenges we are discussing are really what KIG exists to improve uh, for, for the chamas. Uh, issues of educating members on how then do you migrate from that merry-go-round to an investment group that is actually a technical investment through either education or just enlightening people mm -hmm. or creating forums for others to understand that. So it is the bottom rope of what a chama is, how they actually originate, how they transition into groups. Mm -hmm. I have particularly been involved with the Transcentury, for example, from the first day they came together. So I have seen this thing since nine. 1999 grow around here okay and the, the issues that um, that she's mentioned are what really makes a chama it is not the drama it is really the, the process of growth okay all right let me bring in eric at this yes. point because all the panelists have spoken about the challenges issues to do with mistrust i can't trust you with my money 
um, issues about theft. Actually, uh, a research by FSD, that is a financial sector deepening, showed that 13% of these chamas actually have actually suffered losses of people running away with their money. And also the other challenges of differences in what people want to invest in. Uh, and from where you sit as Eric, I think you, you, you might have a solution for us, do you? Yes. Uh, we actually looked at what's the key reason why chamas fail. Yeah. Okay? And as they've talked of all the challenges, we broke them down into the very basics of this is record keeping. The big companies can afford good accounting systems. They can afford core banking systems. Chamas have to realize there actually has to be one core person that is so committed to the goal that he does all the treasury functions of the chama, keeps everybody updated, keeps calling. We said, what if you automated all this process for, for these chamas? Mm -hmm so that we leave the core of what they want to do to be then discuss the important issues of after we collect the cash, what do they do with it? Mm -hmm. And that's the whole idea of Malipo. Malipo then automates the entire chama processes from the collection, accounting, reconciliation, all the treasury functions are then done by the platform. Mm -hmm. Then the treasurer is now left to, I don't have to dedicate 10 hours mm -hmm. every month just to be able to make sure that everybody within the chama can calculate What's the interest rate on our loans? How much has been collected? Okay. So that's the whole idea of when Malipo comes in. All right. We automate all those processes for chamas. But, but who is it made for? I assume, as Victor Kiprop, I am a farmer. It's March 25th today. Yeah. The, the rains have fallen, and suddenly I didn't know that the rains would come this early. Yeah. And I need to plant. I need, let's say, some 50,000 shillings very quickly for, for planting. Uh, is, am, am I part of those who are targeted by this? We, we tend to look at it that chamas are diverse yeah. in the nature that they are formed. Um, and each chama has its own unique needs and requirements and why they are formed. Others are as simple as just doing many go rounds. Others are complex as we want an investment goal. Maybe we want to buy land or we want to, to find unit trust to invest in. Whatever the goal is, Malipo provides a platform that enables you to do all that. Mm -hmm. okay? So you want to lend to each other. Malipo will then provide a way for you to be able to make the contributions, lend, uh, bring in partners who can lend to you based on your record-keeping ability, uh, which the app already does for you. So the data is now available to those financial institutions that are willing to lend, those mm -hmm. kind of people. Uh, you want to be able to have your own shares within the platform and provide liquidity within the Chama land space. The app then provides all those kind of that environment for you. Okay. So yes, Malipo can play in that space where you want quick access to capital mm -hmm. as a chama based on your existing contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, because the merry go rounds work with when it's your turn, then you can be disbursed. Yeah. And the platform supports all the disbursement functions uh, that come with it. Okay. Yes. Between, because the problem with merry go rounds sometimes is when I need the money, I. I when I need the money, I don't have it because it's, it's Eric's turn. And yeah. when it's my turn, yes. I don't actually need the money. Yeah. I have already fulfilled my needs. Yes. Yes. And that's the question we will be answering yes. immediately after this break. But we have to go for a quick break. Remember, we asked you to be part of this conversation. You can do so on Twitter. Use the hashtag new normal at NTV Kenya at Victor Kiprop underscore. You can also follow the conversation on Facebook and Instagram. We are going for a quick break. We'll be back before you know it.
The future is bright because you can always bank on family. Family Bank with you for life. From far with you, mm, I even gifted you a magnificent house. Hmm. Rosa, it's the thought that counts. Mm -hmm. Please help me. When it comes to fever, you need to be both. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in 15 minutes and is gentle on the tummy. Panadol Baby and Infant, tough on fever, gentle on your child. Tunuki. Nunua offer kama credo double double na tunukiwa minutes ili uendelee kuongea zaidi na upate zawadi kutoka Safaricom. Mimi naitwa Justina Siokao aka Madam 2020. Nakaa hapa Machakos. Mimi natumia huduma ya Safaricom ya Tunukiwa. Offer ambayo nanunua ya Tunukiwa ni ya Clendon double double. Na inunua kupitia kwa star 44ash. Inanisaidia kwa sababu ni affordable na sipimiwi. <laughs> kupigia mashambiki wakati ninaweka wimbo mpya hivyo ndo tumeweza kupeleka nyimbo zangu viral na zina trend zaidi hiyo credit ndo ile wakenya wengi wanaendelea kuzawadika kila siku kwa kutumia tunukiwa na wanapata extra juu ya extra piga star triple four hash ili utunukiwe leo Let's see what they're developing right now. Morphix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. At the hashtag, eating life with a big spoon. Okio meka kwa gari madu madu. Yaana ukanitumia message ati ni kukopesa ngiritani Na masimu unapiga mingi ukinitafuta kama siling Ukipiga sere, nilikuwa na wewe <laughs> To get serehe by Abuju Buju Dial star 811 star 935 hash Skiza na nation Try Panadol Advance for relief from headaches, body aches, and fever. With Panadol's Optizorb formula, the tablet gently breaks down in the stomach, quickly absorbs, and starts providing pain relief in 15 minutes. For fast and effective pain relief that you can trust, try Panadol Advance. Thank you for staying with us this morning on your world. We continue our discussion about Chamas in Kenya, the role they play, um, of course, in bridging finance, access to finance in the country, and, of course, how this conversation can be taken forward, how you can grow your Chama from the basic group of about five people to maybe even uh, the, the, the hopes that Eric was mentioning before the break about becoming a whole bank. Yes, and we want to pick up from where we left. And I was still with you, Eric, about the issue of this Malipo Sako thing. So uh, f f what difference does it make then? Because initially for me then, uh, to be able to get money, I would need to convince the rest of, uh, let's say, the group, uh, the, the merry-go-round group that I have a very urgent need and uh, I need it like right now. What difference does it make to do it on, on this digital platform? And sometimes actually convening this meeting would take some, quite some time. So what Malipa has been able to do effectively is to automate the loan request platform. Okay? So if your Chama then supports an ability for members to request loans and you have all the levels of approving and calculating the interest rates that's about it, then a member is simply makes a loan request on the app. You don't need to wait for a meeting so that you guys go and sit down so that money can be disbursed to one member. A loan request can be made right on the platform and the disbursement can be done right on the platform. And it will go to either to your MPESA or to your bank account. And all the functionalities that involve approval levels, whether the treasurer, the chairman, if they all need to approve that loan, all that can be set up on the system. 
whether you have guarantors, all that can be set up on the system so that there's absolutely no need uh, to meet for quick disbursements and emergency issues. So we can do this all this on the platform? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring in Virginia here. Virginia, I I'm sure you've been part of, of a Chama before. You, some of these issues you have faced before, do, do, does the things that Eric is talking about, about solving these issues um, on a digital platform, what difference would it make it for you? Um, I think it will resolve the issues of uh, one, transparency, because like most chamas, our chama has gone through the issue of accountability, mm -hmm. having to track contribution, um, knowing what members have contributed, the ones who've fallen behind, um, putting in measures for them to catch up so that you can be able to meet your investment uh, plans and projections. So one of the things I think my LIPO will solve is uh, accountability uh, on the part of the the contribution side, mm -hmm. and also um, keeping of records, uh, records management for the group as, as a whole, yeah. Okay, let me, let me bring in Patrick at this point. Patrick, how much of a risk, uh, given the number of chamas that collapse every year, how much of a risk um, are these the issues of mistrust um, and not knowing who will be accountable and the transparency that Virginia is talking about? How much of a risk is it to um, the collapse of any chama that you're trying to build? You know, chamas are social entities at the at their at the, the very initial stages, mm. built purely around trust. Yeah. And that's why there's that social element, whether you are friends from school, friends from office, or friends from family. The trust element is normally very high in a chama. Now, unfortunately, that trust means that two or three members of the six or ten then become the people who are accountable for the monies put together. Initially, they would put the money in a joint account in the names of those three people. Okay. Now, that is a personal problem. I may know you, Victor, yeah. but when it comes to money, <laughs> I will know you when you have misused it. <laughs> so it is true that mistrust, uh, especially among the smaller chamas, has been an issue uh, leading to collapse in the initial stages of a number of, uh, of chamas. Okay. So that anything that can remove it, remove it up front is quite welcome. Okay. So do you think then for anyone who is very hesitant to, to join a chama, uh, once they see the issue of trust has been taken care of, as in we are, in, we are all on one platform and we can monitor any activity and maybe even get a chance to approve before any withdrawals, do you think this could see more people joining these uh, platforms or, or associations and organizations? Actually, it makes it possible now to join a summer for which there's no social reason. Okay. Because the, 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 the underlying reason for people joining a summer has been that I know Patrick, I know Mary. Now, Victor and I can now be in one summer, even though we didn't have a personal one before. Okay. It, it does improve the place for chamas in terms of who then can join a summer. Okay. Hannah, you mentioned earlier that you have also been in this business of chamas before and you had a problem in trying to identify with the, which one to join. Other than the fact that, of course, it will give you a source of finance and help you access that quick loan that you need, what is that small factor that you look out for uh, before you join a chama? For me, I look at the goal and the vision that we have uh, amongst, amongst each other. Like, what are we aiming for? Is it an investment that you want to do? Or uh, is it a social setup? Or are we just doing this because of the welfare side? In case someone gives birth, someone has a wedding, or someone has a funeral per se. So what are the main reasons why we are coming together? Okay. So if it is about the funeral, can we go into getting an insurance per se mm -hmm. that will sort that problem when it comes. Okay. So those are the kind of things I look at. Okay. But, but the issue that Patrick mentioned about trust, even when it's a family, even, it's, even when it's very close friends, how much of importance uh, do we attach to, to the trust? Because we've seen situations where even family members, you know, uh, are, are fight over um, issues of trust. It's very true, Victor. Uh, they say money brings out the true character of someone. And actually, you will know that this is your uncle or auntie until they stop paying the loan. So that if you want to know the true character <laughs> of your sister, disagree. you give them money. It's true. <laughs> money actually <laughs> brings the character. It's not, money is not evil. Mm -hmm. It just brings the 
true character of who you are once you have the money with I, you. I really want you to try my character immediately after this one. <laughs> I will try and do that, <laughs> for sure. Okay, mm. but let me bring in Eric at this point then. So we have this, uh, this solution that comes in. It, it makes me avoid going for face-to-face -face meetings. It makes me avoid the issues of record keeping and it reduces the issues of mistrust that I had. But again, how do I join? How do I go about it? So Malipo is on the Play Store and on the App Store for those who have iPhones. It's an app. Uh, you download it, set it up. You register, set up your charmer, invite your members, set up your rules, and then you get started. It's, it's the simplest way to start, manage, and run your charmer mm. all in one platform, yeah. Okay, yes. but uh, you would agree with me that in the past there have been uh, attempts to digitize chamas before and, and they have failed. What are you doing different? I, I think we, we looked at the problem from first principles, ideally. Uh, we didn't try to shoo everybody in, into one solution. We realized that every chama is different, they have different needs, and we built a platform that then allows them to express all those needs on the platform according to their own rules. And we made it so simple to come in, in terms of the user interface, how do you make it scale? And more so, we put a lot of engineering uh, capital into it to make sure that it works smoothly. Because we realized that if the product doesn't work, then uh, we're in trouble. And then we kill the whole idea of, of people wanting to come together and to digitize their platforms. So I think in t what we've been able to be successfully really do is one, build a platform that enables you to do what you want to do as a chamber. We don't force you into rules. Mm -hmm. You can set up the platform as you want. Mm -hmm. Two, it is extremely easy to start and use uh, without much of a manual that comes with it. Mm -hmm. So we made the user interface extremely friendly. And then the third thing is we put a lot of engineering effort to make sure it actually works and does what we promise it does. Okay. Yeah. For, for, for those of us who uh, are slow learners, as we would say, that, does this work like Facebook, the way I would go into Facebook, create my own group, let's say, of people who work uh, with me here or people from my, my estate or people from my high school? Is that the same way it, it works? You're actually spot on. That's, that's exactly how it works. Uh, I'll give you a scenario. Uh, there's a family uh, that they don't necessarily call it a charmer but they have a way of supporting their parents back in Kenya. Uh, and each of them are in different parts of the world. So how then do they come together? Because what used to happen is one brother is the one who used to send all the money to the, to the parent, and, and that used to bring a lot of friction. Between them. Why am I the only one supporting? So what they used Malipo for is they form a family chama, which they call a family circle, and they're now able to put in money, each of them as they want, and they link it to the bank account and the Mpesa, so that Malipo does not necessarily have to keep the cash and then they have to start wondering why is our money. Okay. So yes, Malipo is it, it's quite pretty easy. It's, if you're used to Facebook, then you'll use Malipo from day one. Okay. Very easily, yeah. I'm, I'm quite interested. I don't know. Virginia, have you ever considered trying something like this? I think for us as a group, we are always looking for new ways of, uh, of tightening up our structures. So this is definitely something that we would consider trying out. Um, we've already uh, looked into the app itself and we're currently engaging it as a group um, so that we see how best uh, to go forward as a group. Okay. Yeah. And maybe for Patrick then, uh, we are in a very increasingly digital economy and, and everyone is moving to digital platforms. Uh, businesses are moving digital. And the, the sense has always been that chamas need to stay traditional. Do you think chamas should stay traditional or there's a chance for chamas to survive even in the digital age? It's actually a good thing for chamas because I can tell you that in the universities, for example, there are young people who are just contributing a hundred bob a week, mm -hmm. and they are spread everywhere. Uh, in the in the villages, uh, my mother's age or younger have, are doing the same. Perhaps my mother's age might not use this because of the digital divide, but there are people of my age downwards who are able to handle a phone well. This is what will be helping them. I mean, the, the challenges that the Malipo Circus is solving are real. Okay. And the, the good thing about it is that it is, it is removing the space, what you call geography. So you, you can, as aunties, wherever you are, 
have something that you can only send money to. And if it's that, if the interface is that simple, then it, it removes the question of I am in Nairobi and someone is in my Uganda hood or the other guys are in Congo, because it still brings us to the same place we would have been in a meeting in the village. Okay. But for a sector or a people or, or a segment of our, of our population that has always been locked out, you go to the bank, you knock, they tell you, but they even don't have a title deed, please go away. You don't have this, you go away. They try the online apps and there's, there's, um, the, 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 rates, the interest rates are so high, they don't know how to read the, maybe the terms and conditions and they don't know if this person has their own interest at heart. But somehow we have some, this, some sort of a digital bank that is made up of me, you and myself, people from the same village. What does this mean for us as a country in terms of advancing our financial inclusion? Actually, it will make it uh, very easy uh, for literally any community, any group, any brotherhood, sisterhood, to actually begin to create more money in a pool somewhere with a lot of accountability. Okay. But the challenge was that accountability anymore. Okay. Now, if it's easy to use, and there is accountability, which is the fact, and 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 it removes geographical, uh, the physicalness of people having to come from somewhere to meet. I mean, I go to chamas. Um, I get called to chamas of families from Muranga, from where they come somewhere in Nairobi to meet or whatever it is, including. Okay. Remove that on a daily basis. So we meet once in a year for our for our interest. I can tell you we are looking at a real, real financial inclusion taking okay. place here. Okay. Because the the, the, the the current understanding of financial inclusion has been making you be a borrower. You're now going into the savings side, which is really powerful. Okay. Because Kenya lacks a deep pocket of savings. And, and an, a, an instrument that makes that possible really makes the whole uh, coin complete. Okay. I, I really want to talk to you, um, Eric, about what it means then now that you've convinced me to join the platform. But I think we have a caller who wants to maybe ask a question. That should be Samuel from Zimmerman. Samuel, if you can hear me, good morning. Do you have a question or a comment? Yes, I have a question. Eh? Yeah. yeah. On uh, the, 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 Malipo, the Malipo app, yeah. Mr. Oyugi has just introduced eh? Yeah. So how does it help? How does it help the, the Chama people? Because I'm in mean, three serious Chamas that are still registered. Yeah. And you start saving, saving with a circle. Yeah. Now, I would like to know how maybe we can be helped in terms of finances because that is the biggest challenge. Though okay. not, not really, because we always pull funds together and okay. make decisions and do some few projects. Eh? Okay. Especially for buying piece of land and so on. So how can... That is Malipo. Can even Malipo help us financially, even if not, no, not, uh, not a lot of money. Yeah. And, and also, I heard about the the Kenya National of Chambers. National of Chambers, eh? they yeah. are giving out loans. Yeah. Have you heard of that procedure? Maybe you can enlighten us. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that is Samuel from Zimmerman, and I think the question to you, um, Eric, was I don't know if you heard him, but he said that he's a member of three chamas, and 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 he, they want to know what Malipo does differently for them especially in the issue of access to to funds okay one is uh for those who for those who are in multiple chamas malibu is even better because now you can manage all the multiple chamas in one platform mm. so you don't have the fatigue of having to keep multiple excel sheets just to keep uh, records of what your holdings are in each of these chamas and secondly as as we've overemphasized on the point of record keeping I, I strongly believe, and anyone who has built anything knows, that it all starts from the ability to know where your money is, how your money moves, and that is purely on your record-keeping ability. Okay? Ideally, we are giving you a CFO in an app which you could not employ, or you could not be able to afford. All of a sudden, we give you that on an app for you to be able to grow your charmer from there. Mm -hmm. And then that links all the linkages that comes with that. Once record keeping is done, once the foundation of what then brings, uh, optimizes the cost function of development, which is the record keeping part, mm -hmm. once that is done, then you unlock limited possibilities. Because I mean, humans can do wonders if okay. they come together. Okay. We just need to set the right bedrock for them to be able to do that.
Okay. And that then becomes in the ability to keep their finances and to have the treasury functions handled. Okay. And to automate those processes for them. All right. So yes, as he's, hand, he's talking about that, I believe Malipo enables him to now be able to handle multiple chambers on the same platform without the headache of dedicating so much hours into it, uh, providing the financial records of which financial institutions can then plug into to maybe offer you loans as you wish or even just lend between yourselves. Uh, because we still believe that the cheapest cost of credit has to be between your friends and your own ability to collect. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. So, so now maybe you have convinced me and my producer and my director and we have decided to form this, let's call it your world, um, you know, Chama, and we have taken it on this Malipo platform. Yes. But we have spoken largely about how to join and what it means. But um, I, I, from what I understood, then it, it, it also has some sort of uh, connectivity between now other services. What else do I get once I'm on this platform? So once you're on Malipo, is, uh, we've built a platform that enables you to do several other things once you're there. And, and the key thing is chamas have what they call welfares built into them, okay? So when one of you has a celebration that they need to do, and whatever the nature of that celebration comes into, Malipo can then plug in insurance that if you, you are able to buy as, as a member of the group, then can support you to be able to have... Uh, that done. Malipo can plug in investment opportunities and advice. Uh, you are a chama that wants to be able to buy land. Malipo can bring in the experts that are needed to facilitate that kind of process mm -hmm. and make it extremely frictionless for you. So we remove the all the friction that is in the process of trying to move forward mm -hmm. as an individual together as a group. Okay. Yeah. Well, I would argue that uh, chamas are largely unregulated as such, yeah. but bringing us into this platform now brings the aspect of regulation. Will we start seeing the CBK and the data uh, protector coming in to ask too many questions? We don't believe so because Malipo actually acts under regulation uh, in partnership with a bank, uh -huh. so the money does not sit with Malipo in any way. Mm -hmm. You link it to your bank, so it sits with you. Uh, so I don't think there's, they've been, the government is not willing to start regulating organizations that are small and are under five people mm -hmm. because you only start being under the core financial system once you're a certain group and you formally register your chama with the institutions that then do that. Uh, so we don't see a problem with that going okay. forward in terms okay. of regulation. Yeah. Let me bring in Hannah at this point. Hannah, the, the challenge with um, big organizations like banks and insurance companies um, being connected to uh, chamas has always been the way they are disorganized. There's no record, there's no way of regulating it and punishing those who do not pay, uh, let's say, repay their loans. But now that they are streamlined and they have a platform where they can be monitored, does this give you maybe an opportunity to, to maybe come in again? Yes, very true, Victor. I want to echo Eric for digitalizing chamas. This has been long due, and we call this a corona baby. So it, it has come in handy, actually. And what Corona has taught us is things can happen very suddenly. All of a sudden, you lose a job. All of a sudden, you lose a loved one. So things happen, and people have seen it for real. And what we have now is chamas which are digitalized, and they have a record keeping, and they have a structure. So that has bring the trust level very high. And you can actually, now that you're in a chama and you've grown this money, and it has enabled you to have a saving culture as an individual. And you've brought your money to a level now it's um, 100,000 or 1 million. What then do you do as a chama? That is where we come in and advise you as an individual basis. What can you do with the money that you have in your savings platform? Mm -hmm. um, do you open a money market fund? Do you have a unit link trust? Um, do you have it in terms of long-term plan? You must have a goal as an individual. Do you want, what do you want to do short-term, mid-term, and long-term? Mm -hmm. So all those are the plans that we will have to go through with you as an individual or as a chama and enable you to double your money or even triple it. Okay. And I think that's a challenge that uh, we've seen behind the, the reasons why many chamas collapse. Maybe I can ask Virginia if the issue of um, divergent opinions and divergent investment um, ideas. So it's a section of the chamas want us to buy a matatu, others want to go into agribusiness, and others want to go into the Nairobi Securities Exchange, while there are those who don't even know what is that. Is this something that you've noticed before? 
Most definitely. Um, as our chama, we definitely went through through these issues. We we had various investment projects that we wanted to invest in, but getting the unanimous decision on which direction to go in was something that we really struggled with. So how we went about it is that we created structures um, in terms of decision making so that we can be able to get a certain number of approval level uh, or a certain level of approval so that we can be able to proceed with an investment uh, project. So for us, we decided as uh, once the directors approve uh, an investment uh, project uh, unanimously, then we proceed because uh, um, if you have very many divergent decisions, you can never move and uh, which makes very many people uh, lose hope and want to to leave the chamas so okay. you need to be chamas need to be very clear about uh, their decision making process and how they want to proceed okay as a group. okay yeah. and in your closing remarks in just 30 seconds and because we're running out of time with the solutions and the innovations that we've discussed right now about digitizing chamas does the future look any brighter for you as a chama most definitely because you know um, our group is made of young professionals which means that we're very digital savvy so uh, like i mentioned we had issues with uh, transparency accountability of our contributions so this will definitely help us to tighten that 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 loophole that we have in terms of uh, uh, keeping records of our contributions managing our welfare projects and uh, maybe also planning uh, future investment uh, projects that oh. we may have. Okay. So I think uh, Malipo circles would be something that we'll definitely consider moving forward. Okay, let me bring in Patrick. Patrick, in, in your closing remarks then, um, the, the challenge with Chamas has always been that they're viewed as issues to do with small mamambogas and watua boda boda. But the way Hannah has spoken and the way now insurance companies are coming in to give you advice on how you can invest in the money market funds and which other investments you can make with the funds that you have pulled do you think that it's 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 a time for even um the bigger boys to join chamas in your closing remarks actually that is a historical view chamas today come in um we have a lot of chamas that i have been formed specifically for investment in the last 10 years or so the, in the history of chamas in the 1990s yes it looked like um, a, a small person's thing. But today we are talking about chamas formed by natural persons, okay. chamas formed by unnatural persons, chamas formed specifically for investing. It is it is no longer the small thing it used to be. Okay. It's actually a very huge uh, a book of money sitting in, uh, in savings accounts um, across the banking sector and across assets that is driven by Chama. Okay. The numbers we looked at perhaps four years ago, you are looking at 90 billion. Is, is that big? Okay. All right. Hannah, in just 30 seconds, is the future for Chama's digital? Yes, it is, Victor. And I'm very happy that we are digitalizing Chama's because right now with the corona, we have social distancing and all that. So thank God we have Malipo circles and we can still invest our money. And um, we can actually let you know further, other than just bringing your money into one platform, into a pool, what else can you do with the cash? Okay. So please feel free to call me, contact me. I'm Hannah Maria, ICL Iron. Okay. I'll give my number. Thank you very much. And, and, and to you then, Eric, in your, in your closing remarks, for anyone who's first of all considering, still thinking, should I join this Chama thing or not? And then for the Chama that is thinking, should I digitalize it or not? When is the last time to do it? Yesterday is always the right time. The next best time is now. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. That has been, of course, Eric Otieno Oyugi is the founder of Malipo Sako, who was uh, part of the panelists who have joined us this morning. And, of course, we have um, unfortunately run out of time. Uh, we can't even sample some of the feedback that we you had sent us, but gladly we had uh, taken some of them uh, previously. And we had, of course... Um, the few callers who are able to call in. Uh, of course, much thanks to Virginia Biriri, she's a Chama member. Of course, Patrick Wameo, um, of course, from the Association or the Kenya Association of, of Investment Groups. 
and uh, of course Hannah as well she said from um, ICE Line Group for joining us and help us move the discussion of Chama forward. The discussion does not end here. Make sure you can continue to send those questions on Twitter. We will make sure that our panelists, especially Eric, will be able to follow up and respond to you on how you can digitalize your Chama. But for the moment, it's goodbye from us. Keep watching NTV. We see you again tomorrow morning as we go back to reiterating and re-emphasizing uh, why you should follow the COVID-19 protocols. I've been your host, Victor Kiprop. Keep watching.